Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 300 on December the 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on GameStop Corporation, the Van Eck Vectors Gold Miners ETF, and Riot Platforms, Inc., and we discuss three new trades on Altamune, Inc., Advisor Shares Pure U.S. Cannabis ETF, and Snap, Inc. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the video tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And for anyone that wants to learn how to trade options or to just get better at how they're already trading, we've launched the weekly option membership group. The group features video training that can be accessed online whenever it works best for your schedule. There's daily interaction with me and others in the group through a chat group and ongoing videos and webinars to make sure everyone is up to speed and gets the help that they need. This is a community of option traders that can support you in your growth. So email me immediately if you want to learn more about becoming part of this exclusive group. Now, the markets finished the week with hardly a move. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained two points, ending the week at 36,247 points. That's a change of 0.007%. The S&P 500 Index gained nine points, ending the week at 4,604 points. That's a 0.2% change week over week. Now, there was a bit of movement, quite a bit of volatility in between, But at the end of the day, the week over week movement was next to nothing. All right, so now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week this week is the next trade. There's always a next trade. Sometimes I'm in the market looking for the perfect trade. You know, the one with the right risk to reward ratio that is definitely going to make me two or three times as much money as I even thought it would make me today. This is the trade I've waited for my entire life, and I see it right there in front of me. No sooner than I double blink, the market moves, and I have to check my prices again. Then the market moves again, and the option prices follow suit. Next thing you know, the move that I thought was about to happen is happening. I start experiencing a serious sense of FOMO, and I chase the trade. I chased it just outside of the price range that was perfect. Now, I'm in an okay trade. Has that happened to you before? My answer now is just let it go. Most of the time when I chase a trade, I miss out on other opportunities that were actually priced better. The worst is when you see the perfect trade an hour or two later, but you've already consumed the amount of risk you plan to use today on that first trade. You know, the one that is not so perfect because it got away from you and you chased it. I'm sure this is hitting a few of you right between the eyes. If not, maybe I'm just talking to myself. There are opportunities in the market every hour of the day. If you catch them all, fantastic. But you know what? I don't need to catch them all to have a great life. I can catch a few and eat very, very well. The perfect trade is the one that you executed at the price that gives you the risk-reward ratio that you really wanted. That's it. If the market moves and the prices are no longer perfect, just wait a few minutes. The perfect next trade might be just right around the corner. All right, so I'm super excited today to be recording my 300th episode of the Weekly Option. When I started this podcast out, I had no idea I'd still be going to make it all the way to episode 300. So I'm working on a few new enhancements for the next 100 shows. Thank you all for listening and following Make sure you've subscribed on your favorite podcast platform and definitely share it with friends if they are focused on options too. All right, so let's get into the trade review from last week. We'll start off with our covered call on GameStop Corporation. Symbol G is in golf, M is in Mike, E is in Echo. 
At the time, the stock was trading for $15.29 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the December 15 half call at $1.80, hoping for a return of 13.15% in two weeks. Well, shares of GameStop gained $0.26, cents, ending the week at $15.55 per share. The call option we sold lost $0.98, cents, leading to a gain of $0.72 cents if we were to close the trade out immediately. However, with the stock hanging right near our option strike price, we are definitely expecting to gain more than twice that amount by holding onto this trade for one more week until expiration. This trade is working out as planned. You definitely want to keep track of the stock's price over the next week, but at this point, no adjustments are needed. Next up, we had a credit spread on the Van Eck Vectors Gold Miners ETF. Symbol G is in golf, D is in delta, X is in x-ray. At the time, the stock was trading for $31.81 per share. I looked at selling the December 31 half, 31 put spread at 18 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 32 cents per spread. Now, shares of GDX lost $2.13, ending the week at $29.68 per share. The out-of-the-money put spread that we sold is now more than $1 in the money. And at this point, I would expect the spread to expire at full value, leading to a loss on this trade for the week. Now, if you were to sell a call spread with a higher pair of strikes, you won't collect enough money to offset the loss on this week. Uh, we would normally do that. We try and create an iron condor to collect some of the premium that we might have lost. Of course, if you sell a call spread with lower strikes, now you run the risk of adding to your loss if the stock finishes right between your, your call strikes and your put strikes and you end up losing on both spreads. So I always mention that these trades are risky because there isn't enough time to make a good adjustment. You can always roll the trade to the next month, but at this point, I would just wait this one out and see how it ends up. There's always the possibility that the stock moves higher over the next week and this trade still ends up expiring out of the money. If not, it's okay. This was a spread. We knew exactly how much we could lose when we put the trade on. So we didn't want to lose, but we knew how much we could. That's the beauty of trading spreads. So your maximum loss right now with no adjustments would be $0.32 cents per spread. That's okay. The bigger problem is, let's say that you decided to get out there instead of going long, by selling a put spread, you had decided to buy the ETF. Well, if you had bought those shares, you would have lost $2 this week. It'd be a much more, assuming 100 shares um, per lot. So that would have been a you know a couple hundred dollars that you lost instead of 32 bucks. So that's part of the reason, that's one of the big reasons I like trading spreads. It allows me to have a defined amount of risk right from the start. So whether I decide to make an adjustment or not, I know that I can only lose so much. And of course, it's a defined gain as well, but I'm okay with that. Our final trade from last week was a debit spread on Riot Platforms, symbol R as in Romeo, I as in India, O as in Oscar, T as in Tango. At the time, the stock was trading for $13.77 per share. I looked at buying the December 13, 13 half call spread for 32 cents which could give us a maximum gain of 18 cents, or that would be a 56 and a quarter percent return in two weeks. Now, shares of Riot Platform gained $2.06, ending the week at $15.83 per share. The end the money call spread that we bought is now deep in the money. That means this trade worked out, thankfully. So we will look for uh, this trade to expire in the next few days, fully in the money, uh, leaving us with a nice 56.25% return. So no adjustments are needed on this one as well. As always, it's expiration week, so keep track of how this stock finishes up so that you actually close the trades out for the amount that you're expecting. And that's it for the trade review for this past week. Um, as a reminder, December expiration is just one week away. It's on this upcoming Friday, December 15th. We'll focus on options that expire on January the 19th today and for the next few weeks. So we're gonna start off with our covered call. I'm looking at Alt Immune Inc. Symbol A is in Alpha, L is in Lima, T is in Tango. The stock ended the week at $6.48 per share. 
I'm looking at buying stock and selling the January 7 call at $1.25, hoping for a return of 27.31% in six weeks. Then you enter this trade by buying stock for $6.48 and selling the January 7 call at $1.25. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $7 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $5.23 per share, and in real terms, the stock purchase will require $648 and you'll collect $125 for selling the option. Next up, we have a credit spread. I'm looking at the Advisor Shares Pure U.S. Cannabis ETF, symbol M as in Mike, S as in Sierra, O as in Oscar, S as in Sierra. The stock ended the week at $7.45 per share. I'm looking at selling the January 7, 6 put spread at 38 cents. This could give us a maximum possible loss of 62 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the January 7 put at 78 cents and concurrently buying the January 6 put for 37 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $7 per share. The break even price on this trade is $6.62 per share and in real terms, you'll collect $38 per spread that you sell and have $62 at risk. And then our final trade on the week is a debit spread on Snap Inc. Symbol S is in Sierra, N is in November, A is in Alpha, P is in Papa. The stock ended the week at $15.09 per share. I'm looking at buying the January 14, 15 call spread for 63 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 37 cents or that's a 58.73% return in six weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the January 14 call for $1.61 and concurrently selling the January 15 call at 98 cents. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $15 per share. The break even price on this trade is $14.63 and in real terms, you'll pay $63 to enter this spread and your maximum gain is $37 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for following. Thank you for sharing. I look forward to making a few changes uh, in the next 100 shows. So I'll keep you posted. If you have any suggestions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, have a great weekend. And as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.